Am I the a-hole for kicking out my parents after they never told me about my half-sister and I found out about her? Guys, my name's John, and I read daily stories of some of the most drama-filled stories on the world wide web. Today I have two Am I the a-hole stories for you. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's go ahead and jump into story number one. So let me clarify, I'm writing this out of confusion and stuff. I'm 28, and I love my parents. They've always been great to me, loved me, and supported me. They've been staying with me and my wife since we had a baby to help out. And if I'm being honest, it has been a great help having them around. Yesterday, my dad asked me to get the mail from his place after work so he can pay his bills. Well, I got the mail, and most of it is bills and ads, but one actual letter. I didn't think anything of it and gave it to my father. He apparently threw it out, but my wife noticed it in the trash bin and read it. She did not know what it was when she saw it. She brought it to me, and it was addressed to my dad as father, so obviously my half-sister. She's pregnant and asking for money because it's harder for her to make it, and she just wants to support her baby. I confronted my parents, and yeah, she's like 21-ish, born from my dad's affair. He gave her money until she graduated, and she writes him letters. She apparently is not in college because she's broke, and he thinks she's stripping or doing sex work. He doesn't even know for sure. He just told me he's done supporting her, and she is not his responsibility. We talked more about it for a half an hour. My mom was quiet, and my dad has never been like that. I don't even know the word to describe how he was. It just made me so freaking angry I made them leave right there without even taking their things back. Because it feels like it's my fault I have a sister out there who's living like garbage while I'm out here enjoying my life. After looking into her a bit more, I talked to two cousins two hours ago, and they're both divided on if I did the right thing. One cousin thinks I was in a hole for making my parents leave without talking things through or even making a plan. But her sister thinks I did the right thing. My wife told me she's staying out of it since she regrets reading somebody else's mail. I just don't know myself. I feel like in a hole for making my parents leave because I love them so much. But at the same time, I feel so mad over the situation and just a little edit since people are wondering if my mom knew about it and what she was quiet. Yeah, she knew everything, the judgment, not the a hole. But I do have an update, so let's hop into the update now. I want to thank everyone who said go talk to my parents. That's the first thing I did. I went to their place and tried to talk to them, but it was frustrating, and my mom got angry when I said I was going to reach out to my sister. She asked why I cared, and I got upset. I told her because she taught me to. My dad saw me out after that and surprised me by telling me he was proud of me for being a better man than him. That was weird. Anyways, my wife reached out to my sister, Anna, and she agreed to meet. We went in with my cop friend, Joe, because you never know. We met Anna in her apartment, and it's in the rough side of town. It's tiny and a crap place to live. Anna's a small, quiet girl who works in a library. She reminds me of my grandma. She claims she's only a waitress at a strip club to make ends meet. Obviously, she can't do it now. She said she failed like her mom. And the best thing she can do is have her kids succeed. She said she just wanted cash to take pregnancy classes. I gave her my phone number and some cash. That night my wife asked if I could let Anna move in because she felt heartbroken. I gave Anna the offer, but she refused and said she will not take advantage of us. About a month later, she called me crying and said there's black mold in her building and she has to go. She came to us with barely anything, just clothes, a wallet, a toothbrush, and a sack of old books. Since then, she's just been sad and really alone because she thinks she's taking advantage. She tries to help with chores a lot and always apologizes. She's only happy when she plays with our baby. But it was her birthday a few days ago, and she asked if we'd get her cupcakes. It was like she expected me to say no, but my wife went and got them in a whole Dairy Queen cake while I got her a box set of Expanse books. She started crying and hugged both of us when she saw everything on the living room table for her. In the days since, she seemed happier. And I won't lie, I'm worried for her, but I do think stability has helped her. As for my parents, my mom refuses to come as long as she's there, so I visit her with the baby sometimes. My dad refuses to go because he says he's ashamed. Whatever, I guess. On the other hand, my wife's parents told me they are more proud of me than ever. Hey guys, so that was a tough one to read. I saw a lot of points from each side why they would keep the sister hidden, but ultimately, I'm going to have to say my opinion is not the a whole in favor of Opus. I mean, just imagine how shocked you would feel if you just found out about your own flesh and blood sibling, and you did not know about her your entire life. Guys, let me know exactly what you make of this story in the comment section below. Do you agree with me when I say the mother kept the child hidden because just thinking of the child reminded her of her husband cheating? Let me know your thoughts on that and drop your opinions in the comments down. 
And let's go ahead and hop into story number 2, which is also in Am I the A Whole Story. Hello, I'm a 56-year-old mother to 33-year-old Kelly and grandmother to 16-year-old Opal. Kelly became pregnant with Opal at 16. My husband, Eddie, and I have always believed in having the right to choose. However, Kelly insisted that she wanted to keep the baby and not give it up for adoption. We helped a lot as Kelly was only 17 when Opal was born. However, Kelly would rarely help with parenting, even when she was available. Even asking her to watch Opal for an hour while we ran errands was an issue. It was rare that Kelly would not complain about why she had to be there to look after Opal. Kelly chose not to attend college after graduation. She had a job with a flexible schedule, yet she rarely made herself available for Opal. Kelly was only home to sleep or get dressed for some party. She also relied on us to purchase supplies and book appointments for Opal. Eddie and I would have serious talks with Kelly that she needed to step up as a parent. Kelly would only make empty promises and never follow through on them. Kelly moved out when Opal was six. Kelly comes around maybe once in a blue moon and for holidays. But Eddie and I have been the ones to raise Opal. Opal is doing extremely well. She has good friends, plays tennis, participates in volunteer projects, and plans to be a marine biologist after graduation. The school year ended for Opal last week, so we had a nice dinner to celebrate her good grades. Kelly came along, along with several other family members. We were all chatting and enjoying dinner together when Kelly stood up to make an announcement. She announced to us that she was pregnant with her boyfriend's child. We were already upset because this was supposed to be Opal's special moment, and Kelly announcing her pregnancy was completely inappropriate. Eddie and I said nothing, and Kelly started to say how she and her boyfriend were so busy with life right now. Eddie and I interrupted Kelly and told her we would have nothing to do with raising this new baby and would not be providing anything for it, supplies, child care, etc. Well, Kelly flipped out, and an argument ensued. Kelly called us heartless and claimed we were willing to throw our grandchild away. Eddie and I called her selfish for expecting us to raise another child. We're too old to raise a baby. Kelly's 33 and needs to grow up, give the baby up for adoption, or be a parent and raise it yourself. Kelly left in tears. Now the family has broken into sides. The ones agreeing with Kelly say that we adopted Opal and are sending a message that we don't care about our newest grandchild. Others are saying we should have taken her side privately instead of shooting her down in front of everyone. And our reaction was cruel. Eddie and I feel we have to be blunt with Kelly and not sugarcoat reality. Opal likes to show us stories from here sometimes. So I thought it would be a good place to ask for a neutral perspective. Am I the a whole? A few little edits added on to the story. Edit number one. Opal's always able to express her feelings with me or Eddie. Opal also has a therapist who's available to speak whenever she needs it. Opal visited the therapist weekly during middle school but now has it needed to see him more than once a month. We will be taking Opal on a mall trip to make up for what happened at the celebration dinner. We spoke privately to Opal after the incident, and she knows we in no way view her as a burden. Our granddaughter is a blessing, and many of our happiest moments involve supporting Opal and watching her grow. But Opal, at 16, she doesn't need the kind of constant attention and care that a newborn baby does. We are now too old to be adequately raising a newborn baby, even if we wanted to. The biggest problem is that Kelly's now an adult and needs to start acting like one. Kelly's supposed to outlive us. The reality is that Eddie and I aren't going to be alive for her or her children's entire life. It is why Kelly needs to accept that she cannot expect us to take care of her responsibilities and must be independent. Edit number two. Several people have informed me that the part where Kelly expected us to raise the new baby was unclear, so I apologize for that. I thought it was self-explanatory, but I realize none of you actually experienced what happened. Kelly talked about how busy she and her boyfriend were with their lives, then began to talk about how grateful she was that we would always look after our grandchildren and how since we had gained so much joy from raising Opal, we would be even happier raising the second baby. After Eddie and I called her out, Kelly confirmed that she had expected us to adopt and raise this second baby as well. Kelly said how she and her boyfriend did not have time to raise a baby but that putting the baby up for adoption would be throwing it away. She assumed we, at almost 60 years old, would have no troubles or opposition to raising a newborn baby. First of all guys, drop down in the comments section down below. Opal, for the amazing work that the parents Aka Opus did for Opal. But that's beside the point. I am going to say this to me is obviously not the a whole. I cannot believe the audacity of Kelly being 33 years old and expecting her family Aka her parents who were about to be in their 60 seconds to watch after yet another child that she seemingly doesn't care to want or even need. It's ridiculous, and I think Kelly is a giant red flag. Guys, let me know exactly what you make of this story. 
If you were Kelly's parents in this exact same situation, how would you go about handling it? Would you do it the way they did it? Let me know in the comments down below. That's all the stories I have for you guys today. I hope each and every one of you have an amazing day. Don't be afraid to try something new today. And I'll catch you guys in the next story. See ya.